So hello everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how to exploit an, F, uh, an off by one error. So uh, basically what an off by one error is, is it's where it allows us to override um, one bit of memory after the buffer. So the idea is that allows us to edit the EBP. And because memory is stored little endian, uh, which I've explained in previous videos, it allows us to overwrite the least significant um, byte of this. And what this allows us to do is it allows us to change where the return address is. So normally we've got the buffer, the EBP, ESP return address, a few other things here. But the idea is the EBP points to the frame. So the thing after the EBP is pretty much always going to be the return address. So if we change where the frame is, this changes where the return address is. So basically what we can do is we can make the return address somewhere in our buffer. And when the return address is somewhere in our buffer, it allows us to go and execute code anywhere we want. So obviously the basic one is we'll just be able to put some shell code in our buffer here. Otherwise, if they've got a non-executable stack, um, then you'd be able to do ret to libc with it. So I will get started. So basically the idea of the attack is we're going to have a NOP sled, then we're going to have our shell code, um, then we're going to have a set of return addresses, and then we've got the little bit to overwrite the EBP. So basically the reason why we don't just have one return address is exactly the same as why we have a NOP sled. So the idea is we would have to get it exactly on it. And as you know, memory randomizes a little bit. So if we print out, say, 100 memory addresses or 100 return addresses that point to the start of the buffer, then, um, or well, not the start of the buffer, but somewhere in the NOP sled, then we've got a fairly large, um, you know, safety margin, so we should be able to get away with it just fine. So that is the logic of what we're doing with the attack. So now I'm going to show you the program which we're going to do it on. So we've got our program, it's just called off by. So basically what ends up happening is it checks to see if the string length is greater than 1024. If it is, it's going to say it's a buffer overflow attempt and it's going to exit out of the program. Um, and then it's just going to copy, we'll run this function on argv1, which just is a basic string copy into a buffer, um, and then it prints it out and returns. And the main thing to note with this is, although it looks secure, is actually flawed, right? What we need to change this to to make it secure would be uh, greater than or equal to 1024. So by having just greater than, we can have 1024 and it ends up being okay, which is actually overwriting the buffer. So... Um, because the way that string length works is it goes until the null terminator. And the null terminator will be one past that. So we're writing into 1,025 bits of memory. Okay, so here is the code. And so remember, the first thing we want to do is we want to find the starting address of the buffer. Um, we want to make sure that we can segfault it. Uh, and then it's basically just a matter of putting everything together. So I'll just start with this. So we uh, fire up GDB and we'll do off by uh, the name of our program. So I'll include the compiling flags in the description of this video. So make sure you follow those because otherwise you will run into problems. Um, so just to clarify, we are doing this without canaries, without ASLR, and with no stack protector. Oh, sorry, that was the canaries, uh, with an executable stack. Okay, so what we're going to do is let's just test our hypothesis. So we'll just print out 1,024 of these and see what happens. And we have a SIGI sev. So that's perfect. We've got our segmentation fault. And as you can see, this is our error. And this seems quite odd because we've only written 1,024 of these, right? So what it's done is, as I was explaining before, it's simply overriding the least significant bit of the EBP, which then moves it into this buffer space here. 
So what we're going to have to do is first we'll find the return address of the, uh, sorry, not the return address, the start of the buffer. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to put in a breakpoint. So we'll do this just after um, it's copied across. So we will do it over here. So, whoops, copy. Okay, so now we're going to run the program, same as we did before, except it is going to stop right here. So now what this allows us to do is it allows us to properly look through um, our stack. So I typically like to do hexadecimal and byte, and then we're just going to go ESP. And what we're looking for is 414141, and as you can see, it starts right here. So we're going to note down this address here as start of buffer. And then length of buffer we know to be 1024. So now we know that we have got 1024 um, bytes that we can play around with, and the start of the buffer is here. So our shellcode is 46 bytes long. I will quickly. Okay. So therefore, we want to have a fair few addresses, and we also want to have our shellcode, and then we want to have our nops leds. So it, there's a fair bit of variance here. You can kind of do what you want. Um, what I've done that seems to have worked is I have put in 100 of the return addresses um, and then put in the shell code and then I just put in um, as large a knob sled as I can and that seems to work out pretty well. So I will do that exact same thing again. So basically what we've got is we've got... Uh, I will change this so what we want to do is we want to launch it somewhere into the middle of the knob sled or like somewhere fairly far in so let's just change this here to a D and this to a zero. So now this will be enough of a variance that it'll end up roughly in the middle of the NOP sled. So we've got 1024, so we do 1024 minus 46 for the shellcode, and then we'll do minus 400 for the um, return addresses because remember they're four bytes each and we've got a hundred of them. So then that gives us this number here, minus 46, minus 400, and 578. And then we have 578 knobs. So therefore what our payload is going to look like is we're gonna start with the knobs. So we've got our dash x 90s, and we're gonna do times 578. Plus, we'll hit up our shell code now. Okay. Uh, now what we want to put in is we want to put in 400 of our return addresses. So that's just going to be this sort of backwards. So if you are confused with what's going on now, it is a good idea for you to go back to my earlier buffer overflow video because that is probably the most basic version of exploding you can do. So uh, yeah, go back to that and that will explain in greater detail what is happening here. Um, yeah, so now let's run this and we will see what happens. Hopefully it will just work for us. That would be very convenient. Okay, so we'll go run. Hopefully we've got a nice one. There we go. Still have the breakpoint in there. 